This video is an introduction to DNS, IP and network management in UCS. To get started, I will introduce you to the network objects. With network objects, you record the properties of a network centrally. For example, the available IP addresses and DHCP and DNS zones in which the systems are located. Now let's create a new network object. In my case, we want to create my own additional IP address range. For this, we have to create a DNS reverse zone. We do this by selecting domain and choosing DNS. Here, we add a new DNS object and select DNS reverse lookup zone in the drop-down menu. In the field subnet, we enter the network part of our IP address range. My new network object shall have the IP address range 192.168.2. Now we can set the zone time to live. We keep the default value and as name server, we enter the address of our UCS domain. In my case, it is ucs.home.intranet. Finally, we create our DNS object by pressing the Create button. Now that we have successfully set up our reverse lookup zone, we can add our network object to it. To do so, we select Domain and choose Networks. Here, we create a new network via Add and enter a name, for example, Productive Network. Then we define the network. In my case, I simply choose the network 192.168.2.0 and define 24 as netmask. Now we come to the IP address range. In this field, you can enter one or more IP address ranges. If a device is later assigned to this network, the next free IP address from the IP address range will be assigned here automatically. But if we do not set up an IP address range at this point, the system automatically uses the IP address range resulting from the network and the network mask. For example, we enter now 192.168.2.1 as the first IP address and 192.168.2.254 as the last IP address. Then we come to the DNS forward lookup zone. This zone is used to resolve the hostname to an IP address. In my case, this would be home.intranet. And as DNS reverse lookup zone, we enter 192.168.2. This is exactly the DNS object which we've just created. This zone is used to do the reverse lookup of the IP address to a hostname. At the end, we select our DHCP preferences. In my case, it is home.intranet. If you assign a DHCP service here, newly created computers will automatically receive a matching DHCP entry. And finally, we create our network object. Now let's just create a new computer. This means we select computers in the tab Devices and add a new computer. We will now select Linux as a client. We keep the container's default settings and click on Next. Now we enter a computer name, in my case it is Test Computer, and here we can select now our network object. For example, our new network, Productive Network. We see that the computer automatically gets an IP address. Here we could enter a MAC address and create the computer. If this computer is removed later, its IP address will be released automatically. This spares the administrator from manually managing available addresses. DNS data is stored by default in the container CN equals DNS basis DN. Forward and reverse lookup zones are stored directly in this container. Additional DNS objects, such as pointer records, can be created in the respective zones. In input fields for computers, you should always use the fully qualified domain name, FQDN, and not the IP address of the computer. Now, I want to show you one of those DNS entries, which you find under Domain DNS. Then we open home.intranet. Here we see the forward lookup zone. The zone name is the complete name of the DNS domain. The zone name must not end with a dot. This is very important. Here we have the name server. This is the FQDN with a dot at the end or the relative domain name of the responsible name servers. The first entry in the list is the primary name server of the zone. Like I already said, here you can also define more name servers. Then we have the zone time to live. 
which indicates how long other DNA servers are allowed to store the data in their caches. By default, this is 3 hours. This is how a DNS entry looks like. Here in the DNS entries, we can also find our newly created computer. If we want to find the host record, we click on the left side, in my case on home.intranet. And here we find our test computer. The default settings are set if they had not been adapted yet, when I click on it for the first time. But at the moment, we don't need to care about it. The time to live is set here, and furthermore, we can see everything, change everything if necessary, and then save it if we want to. If we want to find the pointer record, we can do this in 192.168.2. We can find our test computer, which I can also select again here. If there are any uncertainties with the other tabs of the DNS setting, we have linked the corresponding sections of the documentation in the video description below. You can simply click on them. The Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DHCP, assigns an IP address, the subnet masks, and if necessary further settings, such as gateway or NetBIOS server to computers. The IP address can be assigned dynamically or static. The use of DHCP allows a central allocation and control of IP addresses via the LDAP directory without manual entries on the individual computer systems. The DHCP integration in UCS only supports IP version 4. In a DHCP service, DHCP servers are combined with a common LDAP configuration. Global configuration parameters are entered at the DHCP service. Specific parameters in objects below. First of all, we have to check if we installed a DHCP server, because by default it is not installed. But we can easily install it by opening the Univention App Center under the tab Software. Next we search for DHCP and here we already find the DHCP server, which we install with a click on Install. After our DHCP server has been installed, we can configure our DHCP settings under Domain. Now let's create a new DHCP subnet. We do this by clicking in the top left, in my case on home.intranet. Then we select Add and then select DHCP subnet. I click on Next. Now we set our subnet address. In my case it is 192.168.2.0. As prefix length or the net mask we enter 24 and as broadcast address I define the last possible address in this IP range. This is in my case 192.168.2.255. If you send something to the broadcast address it will be sent to all IP addresses in this space. And then we can also configure the first and the last address again. If you don't enter anything in these two fields, only those clients will be provided with IPs which have an individual DHCP entry. Just like our Ubuntu client we have created earlier. But if you enter a range here, all clients that ask for an IP address get one. This does not affect clients created in the system before, so it depends on the use case you have. We recommend the first scenario, leave both fields empty if you use the DHCP subnet, for example for a company network. You want to know all devices which are registered in the network. But for bring your own device Wi-Fi networks, we recommend to define the areas. In my case I leave this empty and select create DHCP object. If you want to know more about the IP assignment or DHCP in UCS, you should use the links in the video description. This was the introduction to DNS, IP and network management in UCS. You can find more information and the UCS download on univention.com. Stay up to date and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tutorials about UCS.